Hi guys and welcome back. So yeah, as you can probably tell by the title, um, it's another bloody pickup video. So yeah, this is something I really want to limit myself um, because I'm starting to really think that there's too many games coming into this room now. <laughs> I really want to limit myself because it's starting to become hard to find what I really want to play because there is so many choice, so much choice. Um, I want to see myself more as a gamer than a collector, but it's. Uh, it's obviously not that way at the moment <laughs> but yeah i'd love to click back and do a few more like collection videos and everything like that i really want to finish my playstation one with the handhelds and everything like that and then move on to something else but yeah as you also probably could tell by the title of the channel channel title um i actually went to leeds retro games fair yesterday as well <laughs> so um yeah my slowing down of buying games is really not happening. Although I did go with the best intentions. Although I, my my original intentions was not to go at all. But I actually watched Sean Retro Games Revive channel uh, on Friday night. And he actually mentioned that I was going. And <laughs> I just sat there. I was like, I'm not going. I've not got any plans to go. But as more and more the video went on i was kept thinking to myself do you know what i'm just gonna go i'm gonna go see sean sean's an awesome guy um he, every time i see him he's just full of laughter and like full of jokes and it's just awesome to see so i thought i'll just go see him i knew griff was going as well from griffo um i don't know what his channel's called griffo but i'll start i'll put some title um channel links down below so you can all go see who i'm talking about so yeah, I knew they was going, so I knew that I'd have a good time. I'd just spend a few pounds and everything like that. But yeah, I've got a whole video's worth of pickups. So <laughs> uh, that being said, I think I'll do a bit of a quick roll call of who I did actually meet there. Uh, we are, as I say, Griffo and Sean and his daughter Jo. Uh, sorry, daughter-in-law Jo, uh, which was called to see again. Um, Danster 81, 83, 80, Danster... Danester, I don't know, it's a very confusing channel that one, Danester. <laughs> 2T, uh, 2T UK, uh, Chris and Gav from the Retro Heads, nice to see you guys again. Well, I think it was just Gav that I saw last time, so it's nice to see you as well, Chris. Um, Lewis, Wish uh, Lewis from Wishwash, I think he's knocked the number off his channel as well. And Lee, you've been gamed, which I saw briefly. Um, I'm sure in about six months' time you'll probably see on Lewis's channel, Wishwash, um, the pickups that he's made and he has made a flipping stellar PS2 pickup from that uh, from the Le Leeds Retro Market so yeah I'm really looking forward to seeing that video again of what you actually picked up so that being said what did I pick up so uh, yeah as I say I only took a few quid with me and um, I only wanted to I just as I say I was just there for the crack really um, I didn't have much sleep so I was flipping shattered so I think that might have impaired my judgment a little bit. So, as I said, I mentioned earlier, there was a few stalls that were selling. Like, uh, I think there was one called like Retro Junk or Retro um, Bin or something. And there was pretty much everything on their stall was one to three quid a pop. And then sometimes I was doing bundles and everything like that. So from that guy, I got myself a Shinobi on the game gear, which is a bit of a bust as well. Because my game gear is broken, which I knew, but I was hoping that it was going to work on the Retro Freak. This is the first game gear game I actually have, to be honest. So, um, yeah, my game gear works, but it just needs recapping. It's just, it's another one of them ones, really. So, yeah, this is a cool game because it's basically its own Shinobi. Um, it's, it's different than the Master System version, and yeah, it looks really cool. So I'm really looking forward to give that a go eventually. I can play it in the Retro Freak, but I'm going to have to get myself an adapter for it to actually work, uh, which costs flipping near as much as the Retro Freak again. So yeah, oh, as you can probably see, I've got a bit of a change of scenery. This I've gone back to the old school as well. This is how I used to have it before. I have noticed that when I show off my games, I tend to do this and and that and it annoys me so I feel sorry for you guys probably make you feel flipping sick so I'm gonna do a bit of um, showing and telling really so next up we've got uh, something something Dentetsu 3 which is Secret of Mana 2 Look at that's free on it uh, we never got we only got Secret of Mana which was actually the, the second one in the series so yeah this guy is kind of an okay like corners and everything like that but this box is a little bit battered, as I say. It's got a sticker, really hard, stock in 
like sticker residue there with sticker on it um and it's got like a bit of a hole in the side and it mentions how rare this game is on the side with a gold sticker so you really know it's rare um but it's one i really kind of want in my collection for three quid it's a nice little shelf warmer until then this is the worst condition super famicom game i've got so far i don't think that's going to stand up because it looks a bit ropey um next up we have got uh jurassic park I actually saw this on someone else's channel not too long ago, maybe just before Christmas, so I can't remember who it was. Um, and they did a bit of a Jurassic Park subset collection, and they mentioned how good this game is, and I actually thought this was the same as the Amiga version, where it's like kind of a top-down uh, Zelda sort of clone-ish. Uh, but no, this is like a platformer game, so I'm pretty certain I don't have that, so that's really cool to get in the collection. And say, these were all free quid each. This was too two quid I think and these were three quid I actually got them all on separate occasions I came back a couple of times um, next up a bit of a bust again I've got uh, World of Illusion Stone Mickey Mouse for three quid I couldn't I couldn't leave it behind <laughs> but um, all of these Mega Drive games don't come with manuals this this case is a little bit ropey um, but yeah I actually own this game I knew I knew it was one of the illusion games the Mickey Mouse games I don't own so it's the original one so I'll, I'll remember that for the next 10 minutes and then forget one I definitely don't own and that is Sonic Spinball um, it's got a bit of sticker residue there but that's easy to come off there yeah, it's coming off nice and easy because it's on the outside as I say these cases are a little bit ropey compared to some but um yeah no manual again but for three quid i think that's a good price and it was one i was thinking the other day that i don't have and i wouldn't mind getting uh and the the star prize from that guy's booth um is oh god i can't remember magical hat adventure or something so this one is really cool to actually own um it's one i never thought i'd actually buy because i don't have any japanese games i don't want <laughs> it's another rabbit hole i won't really want to go into if i did it would be going to get some shooters and everything like that but as you can see there you had two pound on it and this definitely is worth a lot more than two pound um oh not my goodness <laughs> cats who'd have them Let's stack these up and as i was saying um yeah this is a really good game i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily have got this but for two quid, I couldn't leave it behind. Um, and the reason why I wouldn't normally have got it is because I actually own this on the PAL version. And it's why some people might not recognise it is because this actually is a different version. They reskinned this for the Western audience. So us in PAL territories and in America, we got the decap attack. So we got the, the very macabre and like sort of like graveyard dwelling um sort of darker tones of decap tab which i flipping love um but i also really like the the design work on this so i think this was i think the reason why we didn't get it over here is because this is based on an anime or something um but yeah i wouldn't have i wouldn't pay the price that this normally goes for but i'll definitely pay two quid and what's good about this is it's fully complete so i'm it's one i'm gonna have to try soon as well to see if this actually works in my pal mega drive because if not it's just a bit of a pretty little box because it i mean that box artwork looks flipping fantastic i don't know if i showed the back but that looks equally as cool i like how they have their graphics compared to our very simple and uniformed versions that we have in pal territories so yeah let's get rid of jurassic park and let's put that one there and put that there. So what do we get next? Um, next up, um, there was a couple selling um, Japanese, like a, not a lot of Japanese games, but quite a few Japanese games. It was mostly Japanese that they had, um, but it wasn't like a big stall or anything. So they was definitely just filling out their collection for whatever reason. Really nice couple. I talked to them for a little bit. I wish I could have talked to them a bit more, but it, everyone kept coming up to them and everything like that. So uh, they had some good stuff, you see. Um, and I got myself, uh, fantasy zone from them for it says 15 quid but i haggled them down to 12 um so yeah really good condition and everything like that it's got the spine card and everything like that really pleased because this is one that i was i bidded on quite a few times and it always went for more than 15 quid so really happy to get this in the collection i actually played this yesterday um yesterday yeah 
when I came back. <laughs> Trying to, I don't know where I am at the moment. Like this weekend's been flipping really busy. But yeah, really happy to get that one. Um, so this, I mean, you, everyone probably knows what this is, but it's sort of like a Defender style game, a cut em up version of Defender with bosses and with shops. <laughs> so really cool. Um, I'm going to try and complete that soon. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll open that up a little bit so it stands there because I just love that box artwork. So yeah, that was pretty much me nearly spent up. I really wanted myself a Master System game and I was walking around just trying to find one that was just cheap enough to scratch my itch. There's a couple of games that I really wanted to find as well that I would pay like sort of a good price for. Um, but it was just trying to find them for the good, the, the reasonable price I wanted to pay. And so we walked around a couple of times and I walked back to the ladies store that had this and she had another game out which she, I'm sure she didn't have out before. Um, and that game is, can you tell what it is? So yeah, I, I showed this to Sean and he was like, how on earth do you know what these games are? But I mean, the thing is I obsess over things. So when I got my Japanese uh, Mega Drive collection started, I just started looking obsessively at these. And I know what the, the, the it looks sort of like a budget release. Maybe it was over there back in Japan, in back in the olden days. But yeah, they had something what's called the Arcade Gears, which is what the AG is. And so a lot of these were arcade games. Um, this game in particular, because I've not actually mentioned what it is, it's Wonder 3. Uh, so it's called Wonder 3 Arcade Gears on the side. Um, this actually, why it's called Wonder 3 is because it's fr actually three different games. You've got a really cool arcade style platformer called Roosters. Um, a shooter called Chariot, which I actually played last night as well and a puzzle game which I haven't played yet so yeah I don't think this comes with a spine card but what is quite interesting and the game's actually not in it because I was, as I say I was playing it it comes with two different manuals which I can't tell the reason why so I thought this was just sort of an, uh, a booklet to like advertise or oh, actually maybe it is I don't know what this actually is maybe it's sort of like a hint sort of book or telling you what can't really work it out so maybe it's sort of like a hints book or something but really cool interesting thing that we don't normally get over here in England at least anyway so this as well which I wasn't too sure I, I actually thought this was a Capcom game but there is no Capcom brand in here I'm really I'm 100% certain this is on the Capcom Generations 2 maybe might be wrong and I'm pretty certain when you, because I played this on MAME as well um, in the past, I'm sure it starts up with a Capcom sign as well, because I always remember thinking it's a Capcom game. But yeah, as I say, no arc, no branding for Capcom, but as I say, really happy to get this. This went way over my budget, <laughs> but I've kind of been outbid on this before as well, which I've never seriously bidded on it because it goes over triple figures. And I paid 65 quid for this. So uh, yeah, she didn't have PayPal or uh, card read or anything like that. So I had to shoot off to the cash point and get some money so I could pay for it. So I'm really pleased that I did because uh, the shooter is really fun. It's not like the, the most difficult shooter as well, but the, it's just, it's got that really nice 90s style arcade. Well, the Capcom look, so. Um, this is why it's confusing me why there's no Capcom branding on it. But yeah, really pleased to get that in my collection. So after that, um, I w as I say, I was I, I brought out 20 quid extra as well with me just to add to my funds. I thought I've broken the seal now. I might as well just carry on, haven't I really? So I want a Master System game. Um, and I went to Lee's deals, direct deals, um, and he had this. And it's in really good condition as well. And it's one that I've been. I was. It was one of the few games that I was looking purposely for, and uh, that game is Cloudmaster. So, this actually, I believe, uh, this is based on some Chinese story. And I can't remember. Is it the something to the West or something? I believe that this is sort of to do with that. I know there's a sequel on the Wii as well to Cloudmaster. Um, but it didn't come over on the Wii over in England. I think it was just in America and probably Japan as well. So this is a, um, a cool little shooter, very interesting shooter, very colourful. 
um, a slower pace shooter than what we used to like with the Truxton and everything like that. So yeah, really happy to get that. So he had 18 stickered on that and I managed to get him down to 15. So yeah, as I say, Lee, Lee seems to always do some good deals, maybe hence why he has his name. Uh, <laughs> um, next, um, I was speaking to Lewis about some of the deals um, that he picked up. Uh, some really great 50, uh, um, PS2 games for 50p. So he mentioned where to look for the stall and I got a couple of Master System games and a double case PS1 game. So yeah, it's got £8 on here but this was actually three quid. So this comes with the manual and the disc is in quite good condition as well. So uh, the case itself is a little bit beat up but I can replace that. Uh, the scratchy wire, it, the surface is actually okay, it's just the black case itself that's got a bit of a crack there so uh, easy to replace. So that brings me down to seven double case black box PS1 games that I need for my subset um, and for three quid, bargain. I've not, like all the games that I've got left now are quite cheap, so I'm quite impressed with that. A couple of there's one that could be cheap and sometimes expensive because it's a double case of a game that's got two different single case versions: um, a classics one, a black box one, and the double case. So they they tend to fluctuate in price. Sometimes you can get them super cheap. Sometimes they're a little bit expensive. But yeah, the other games that I got. Um, from that same guy, um, two pound each. I got these Master System games. I got Sonic 2, which is in a box that's really hard to open, and I don't know why. It's, it's flipping impossible. Now I've got this game because I actually went to play Sonic 2, which is out of my reach. It's over there. Um, God, I've really closed that now, um, and it didn't work. I was gutted because I really wanted to play Sonic 2 on the Master System because. I, I always really enjoy these games because they're, again, another slower paced version of the Mega Drive versions and because of that, it's sort of like the best, better versions to play really. And next up, a game I probably wouldn't have got if it wasn't for two quid because I'd rather have the Mega Drive version, which I'm not too sure if I've got. And that game in question is Mercs. So it'd be really intriguing to play with this and see what it actually plays like. Uh, two quid, can't go wrong, obviously no manual in here. Um, so yeah, two quid, cheers, buy that all day rock one. And um, again, keep talking about Lewis because <laughs> he did really well. Um, oh dear, don't knock it off, off cat, not again. Um, next up we've got a game that I got from the an, another guy's, a guy that was had a lot of just normal full price stuff and then at the bottom of his table he had something called what's a, a, a leftover bin or something I think he called it a bargain bin and everything in that bin was a pound so he had all different types of games and he had a few PlayStation 1 games and I looked in and I thought Phoenix tile right I'm gonna go and do a bit of a Lewis and see if I can get a bargain here so for a pound I got myself a meager assault I don't really know much about PS1 Phoenix games uh, this looks like a mech game, even though the front makes it look like a Contra style game. So yeah, very confusing. So uh, 12 exciting missions, which I'm sure they are. But yeah, for a pound, I think this was a bargain really. Comes fully complete. Um, manual and the disc and everything, which obviously. And uh, the condition of the disc quite good as well. Not many scratches on this one. A um, couple on the Command and Conquer, but nothing too major. Uh, but yeah, for Phoenix, if you know Phoenix, they are they actually worth about a pound or two, or they're worth like money. <laughs> so it looks like none of these have sold on eBay recently, um, and there's people trying to sell them for about 15, 20 quid, I think, to 50. Most of them are around 50, 40 to 50 quid and some idiots trying to sell one for 100 quid. So yeah, as I say, no one's buying it. So it's obviously not that rare a title, but as I say, for a quid, it's definitely worth that. Especially for a Phoenix game. Um, next up, I found a, another guy that was selling a double case game, uh, which I've not got obviously, um, which I do now, and that's Destruction Derby. That brings me down to six games I now have left to find um which really looking forward to this is in really good condition actually the disc itself has a few scratches 
but nothing I'm too concerned about, all fully complete. And I brought him down to a fiver for that. So really pleased, again, knocking, knocking him back. So we're on to the Sinister Six now that is left over. And while I was there, Sean actually uh, dug himself down and <laughs> again, it was another guy that was just, had crates of stuff that he was selling. This guy had five games for five, uh, £2.50 it was. So you had to get a bit of a bundle to get the 50p deal. I think it was a pound each maybe. Actually, I don't think he had a price. I think he just had it like that. So Sean picked himself up five titles and there wasn't any, there wasn't many that I wanted. There was only these two that I wanted from that bundle. So I just asked if we could extend that bundle to £3.50 for seven games. So cracking deal. You can't, I mean, you can't go wrong for that. Especially That's like car boot prices. So the games that I got, and one for basically the title <laughs> and that is bear in the big blue house so i know where you live now retro bear it's a big blue house um and inside you are doing um a lot of education by the sound of it <laughs> yeah too many words for me to read and that's probably why i actually could probably do with playing this game so i need a bit of education <laughs> especially how to speak properly because i flipping definitely don't know how to so this says DC Studios. That's not like DC Comics, is it? It's actually by Jim Henson as well, which I've only just seen. So that's quite interesting. So maybe quite a good title to have. Uh, and next up, I got myself an Xbox exclusive, which is the first Xbox game, original Xbox game, I've actually bought from a market. So I actually saw this on, um, was it Blue Tonic Alex's channel? I think he picked this up recently and he mentioned the fact that it's actually by the creators of Lara Croft but set with pirates so you can't go wrong with that. I don't know if you played that yet Alex yet so I don't so is it any good? Have I got myself a bargain for 50p? It's not got any manual in here but it has got like the catalogue and everything which is very strange but again you can't grumble for 50p. So that's all the games I got and uh, we was we just that's when we decided we we're gonna go off to have some food and so we started sloping off and then just on the corner just as we was leaving just at the exit there was sore thumbs and I've, I've, I've gotten past it a few times and I've, I saw these two items here that I actually picked up I went even further into my addiction <laughs> and I bought a couple more things um, and I kind of haggled in a way that I didn't expect him to like bite or anything like that because usually I don't think I've had any discount from uh, sore thumbs um, but this time I, I got a great deal and it, in fact it was that good that Sean kind of went a bit I need to I, there's something I've seen I'm gonna go and try and haggle <laughs> try and do my kind of haggling so basically there's two items one's quite expensive one's got a, a bit of a decent price and basically I said, can I buy this one item and get this one free? And he was like, well, that's maybe a bit too much, but you can have it for this price, which basically meant that this first item I'm going to be showing you, I got for £10. So I think it was about 25 quid off I got. So I was absolutely buzzing with that. So I was like, I, can't, I, just, I did it for a way to not buy it. But if I was to get that deal, couldn't leave it behind if that makes sense because both of these items I've had my eye on for some time so what are they what am I talking about so first up we've got something Tatsujin not this Tatsujin obviously uh, but it's basically Taiko Drum Masters we call it in the West we never got this in England or in America I don't think America got it at least anyway uh, the first UK release of this series because it's quite a big series in Japan um was the switch one so it's actually come out on quite a lot of systems i'm i'm not too sure playstation 2 is the first one but it also came out on the wii in japan the ds and the 3ds uh so yeah i, I i've always been i'm really intrigued by this because there's an arcade version of this as well but when i've been going to like the play expos there's always one of these set up on the table um ready to play and I've always really enjoyed it so what does it actually look like I've actually brought it out and actually put it together so what actually this actually is is uh, you have two of these drum drumsticks which are quite big buttons 
and uh, it tells you to basically hit in the middle or hit on the side so sounds very simple and it is and that's what's kind of fun about it it's not over complicated and i just love music rhythm games so in the one in play expo the one that pe people bring to that one it's actually about two or three well probably about three or four times the size of this it's quite a big one i don't know what system that's on so if anyone knows i'm sure dylan probably knows because i know he has these on handheld um i think he might even have the playstation 2 one himself as well so um, yeah, what's the big one? Is it another PlayStation 2 release? Um, he actually had another one of these Taiko Drum Masters, uh, but in a different colour box, a bit like how it's probably like a sequel or something like that. So I was tempted to go and say, well, can I get that one for the 10 quid as well? But I thought I was being a bit too cheeky. I might actually get it next time we go. So it actually comes with the game itself, so I have actually got something to play. So, um, well, there's probably going to be some video somewhere of actually what. Yeah, actually looks like so that's the registration card obviously it's fully complete conditions great on it i mean the drum does look like it's been used and everything but the box looks absolutely fantastic and my star piece for today oh my goodness um this is something i've been looking for and what i've paid for this i basically paid for as an unboxed version i don't know if that noise gave it away then actually <laughs> uh, but he was selling a box cop version and I had to get it, I had to get it. And that thing in question is the Sega Saturn, Sega Saturn, Sega Saturn Virtuous Stick. So yeah, I used to hate the color of this box. The look of this box it looks so plain and boring. There's uh, all of the Japanese Sega Saturn accessories have, have got a similar box to this, um, which looks like basically just a normal cardboard box with a screen print on it. <laughs> so, but, just recently, since I've started collecting the Saturn again, I've started the appreciation of the look of this box. I kind of really love the look of it. So yeah, great condition box as well. So I got this for a steal really. So yeah, it's got the manual and everything like that in it. So obviously the, the, the controller itself is not in here, in it. And as you can see, you can really tell why I've got this. I'm not a massive um, arcade stick fan, but once you start doing that with the micro switches, it's just heavenly. But not only that, it just looks beautiful. It's probably the most aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetic easy for me to say, isn't it? Aesthetically pleasing thing I've got in this room. It looked absolutely beautiful. And I was, as I say, I was playing a few of the games last night and I used this and it was brilliant. The only downfall, I found with this is um, sometimes it's got a bit of a squeak it's like the the plastic ball joint that's inside it is kind of rubbing so I don't know if anyone knows how to solve that but it doesn't stop the function of the, the, the actual stick um, it's got a little bit of play before the actuators stop but I was speaking to Cine Steve about arcade sticks the other day and he did mention how just putting a bit of um, electrician's tape um, on the stick, uh, in between the stick and the the arms that press the micro switches make a big difference. So um, I'll probably do that at some point. Um, I did open it up and everything like that just to see if I can try and solve the, the squeak and everything like that, but I couldn't figure it out. It was just doing it when everything was apart and everything. Really easy to take apart these, really simple inside. If I Muggins here can do it, then anyone can do it, but this is going to be one of my most used things, obviously, with the Saturn itself in this room. So, yeah, really pleased I've got this pick up. So, obviously, I've not got this as cheap as Dylan. I think he got this for like a five, fiver in Japan, boxed as well. So, um, a, another thing to mention about these, I, as I have been looking at these on off on eBay for some time now, and usually they're not in the condition the, the the condition of this usually there's some kind of chippage or a little bit yellowed but this looks absolutely untouched really the only as i say the only issue is the squeak on there but i mean it's not doing it now it's just every so often it'll do it and it doesn't stop the gameplay i mean it might be because it wasn't used for some time and because i was using it yesterday it stopped it from happening a little bit more 
Um, but yeah, really happy with this. Have I said that? Have I mentioned that? I'm really happy, really pleased by this. So yeah, because of this big spend I've had on the uh, uh, Leeds market, it does mean that Doncaster market, I am going to be holding back, trying to hold back. So uh, I'll be hiding from uh, Craig's stall, the big towering p pile of games that you can see from every side of the bloody uh, market. <laughs> but no. Um, I'll uh, definitely be going, definitely be enjoying it, and definitely going to see everyone. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed what I've shown, and uh, hopefully see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.